Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and start up a new section. So we're going to continue on and talk about confidence intervals. Confidence intervals and bounds. We want to focus on confidence intervals to start off, but our section is going to also cover confidence bounds. Okay, so we're going to start off with asking our a question. Um, Basically, what is the population mean and the population proportion? Or what is mu and p? So, so far, all the questions that, that we have done, uh, we've been given mu and p so that we can do comparisons. We can see how likely is it to have you know, a mean that's super high or a proportion that's super low or the probability between two things. But so far we've always been given what is the population mean or the population proportion. Um, and in the real world, most of the time when we do things like surveys or when we do polls, uh, if we knew what the true population mean or the true population proportion was, there would be no purpose in doing polls. So we're going to start to go into, well, if we don't have these things, can't, what can we do to do approximations of each? Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and focus on mu to begin with. So we know that the expected value of mu, um, oh, hold on. Let's go back just a little bit. We know that the expected value of x bar is equal to mu, which means that you know, if we were to take a sample over and over again, provided that it's sufficiently large, uh, that, that the sample means are going to be normally distributed and centered about the mean. We learned that from the central limit theorem. Now, what this, in fact, means then is that whenever we take a sample and we find the sample mean, x bar is a point estimator. Meaning that x bar is our best guess of what mu is. Now, it's wrong, but it is going to be our best guess. Now, a point estimator is, is all fine and dandy, but a lot of times we want to be able to say, you know, to expand that, to say that, well, we think that, um, you know, we've, so we've captured x bar and we want to be some percent confident, like 95% confident that the true population value is somewhere between some bounds or an interval that, that we set. So let's, let's go ahead and put that up. So sometimes when we see like tolerances or some other things, we'll see like x bar plus or minus, and then I'm going to put this little acronym up here, MOE, and this stands for margin, margin of error. Okay, so the margin of error comes in from a couple of things. One, it's based on your sample size, and two, uh, it's based upon like how confident we want to be. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But ultimately, like this is this lets us know like if we're plus or minus um, some value. So if we were to go and say, okay, I want to be 95% confident in the weight of the cows that I'm going to, uh, and the mean weight. Uh, of the cows that I'm going to be shipping across the country in some rail line. Well, I'd be able to go out and, you know, sample 100 cows or something, and I know that their average weight is something like maybe 500 pounds. But there's some error, and we know that that error is built in based on, like, the standard deviation and the confidence level, and so we'd say, you know, 500 pounds plus or minus maybe 50 pounds. And so what we could say from here then is that, well, we are 95, well, I'll write this down. So we are 95% confident that the true population, population, 
mean cow weight is somewhere between and we go plus or minus 500 pounds so 450 and 550 pounds. So a point estimate is great, but it only gives us a single value. If we want to be confident about where the true population, either proportion or in this case mean is, then we can use, we can calculate out this margin of error. And in our next video, we'll talk a little bit about how to calculate out the margin of error uh, when we are talking about our sample means.